YouTube advertising has completely changed. And if you're currently running ads and they're not working like they used to, I know why, and I'm gonna share it with you in this video. But if you are yet to run an ad and you've been thinking about it, stop right now and don't launch an ad until you watch the rest of this video. I run a company called adclients.com and we spend over $100,000 every single month running YouTube ads. We are out there on the front lines. We know what is working and so much has changed. In fact, there's some massive shifts and if you're not aware of them, no wonder you're launching an ad, you're hitting the button and it's not working and you're losing money. I have an amazing guy here in my company. He's my head of marketing. His name's Aaron and he is the one responsible for spending $100,000 of my money every single month. I trust him with that money. He gets a, an amazing return and I've managed to pull him out of his office and have him come here into the studio and do a training session for you, teaching you how YouTube is working right now, all of the changes and how you can launch a profitable YouTube ad campaign to grow your business. Hey everyone, it is Aaron here. John's already introduced me, so uh, we're gonna just crack straight on with the tutorial section of this video. Now, you may have tried to run YouTube ads before. Maybe you've even had a look at some of the tutorials that you see online, but likely the reason that you're uh, looking at this video is that you've tried to run YouTube ads and it hasn't worked for you, or it hasn't worked for your business, or you're just trying to find out about YouTube ads because you know the power that YouTube holds and how it can send the most targeted traffic to your offers online. Now, there is a bit of a problem with some of the tutorials that you would have seen online. There are for sure some good ones out there, but they're very, very tricky to find or they don't give you the whole picture. But with the other ones, what you tend to find is that people teach you outdated strategies. They don't teach you the fundamentals. And so when you run your ads, they are already set up for failure so that you can go and buy their whiz bang marketing course that teaches you exactly how to do that. We are not gonna be doing that. Um, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the core principles of running YouTube ads, some of the um, audiences that you can be targeting, and then we're gonna dive into the laptop and go with the click here, click there, tutorial setup. But please, please, please don't skip this section because this is the absolute fundamentals for profitable YouTube ads. It's all about the setup that you do before you even go into the laptop that is why your YouTube ads may have been failing before and how you can get them working. So there have been some big changes over on the YouTube ads platform. Previously, we used to use a targeting type called keywords. That meant that when you go to youtube.com and you search something in the search bar, let's say uh, marketing education or something like that, or how to run Facebook ads or how to lose weight in my belly, then any of the videos that pop up after that, your ads were eligible to show ads on them when someone viewed that video. However, the platform has changed a lot now and we rely on a different type of targeting to find out our ideal customers. We can target people based on what they're searching for on Google. We can target people based on the URLs that they're visiting. It's super, super powerful. Um, so we're gonna be diving in to actually doing some of that research in this next section. Okay, so step one to a profitable YouTube ads campaign is your audience research. This isn't something that you're gonna be diving into laptop, click here, click there, and setting anything up. This is the groundwork of what we are gonna be doing on YouTube because we need to be showing our ads in front of the right people at the right time where they need the service or the offer that we are providing. If you're showing your ads to the wrong people, it doesn't matter how good your video ad is, it doesn't matter how good your sales funnel is or your sales process or whatever it is, people are not gonna feel compelled to opt in because they're not even the right audience. So there are two types of targeting that we use when we're running our YouTube ads. The first is custom Google audiences and the second are custom URL audiences. Custom Google audiences are is an audience or a group of people who are made up based on what they've been searching for on Google and on YouTube. If you didn't know, Google owns YouTube. So that means that the two softwares can pass their uh, their data between each other. So Google can see who's searching for stuff on YouTube and YouTube can see who's searching for stuff on Google as well. So we build up an audience of people based on something that they are searching for on Google. Then when they go over and they go to YouTube and they watch their dog videos or their cat videos or whatever it is, then your ads pop up because they've been searching for something over on Google. The second type of audience is a custom URL audience. This is very, very similar, but it's based on the URLs that people are searching for instead. So um, if someone visits a certain website and you think that person 
is part of my target market, then you can create an audience of people who visit that website and similar websites to it, and then show your ads to them when they go over and watch their cat videos or their dog videos over on YouTube. So the first exercise that I want you to do is literally take a pen and paper or take your phone or whatever, laptop, it doesn't really matter, anything to take notes, and literally just think about what would people be searching for in my industry? What are some of the pain points that they're feeling in my industry? So for example, let's say we've got a weight loss course. We teach people how to lose weight in 30 days in their belly. Now, what we need to be doing is we need to be thinking about how to pain points that people would be typing into Google and on YouTube. So for example, people on uh, Google and YouTube would be looking at how to lose weight in my belly. They might be looking for quick weight loss tips. They might be looking for something like um, diet plans for weight loss. Now these are three different pain points that people are feeling. You know that if someone was to be typing that into Google, if they were gonna be typing that into YouTube, that when your ad pops up offering a weight loss course or a webinar that talks about how to lose weight in 30 days or something like that, they are gonna feel compelled to opt in because you are meeting them right in their pain point. So what I want you to do is spend some time, pause this video, spend some time and come up with five to 10 different search terms that someone will be finding, uh, will be searching for on Google or on YouTube that really hones in on their pain points. Then we'll come back and we'll do audience number two. Right, so as you can see, I've just added in a couple of extra keywords. Uh, we've got five, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm just gonna forget about them for a while. We're gonna move on to audience number two, which is URLs that people visit. Now this might take a little bit of research because you might need to go onto Google, you might go and have to find some different uh, URLs that people visit. But a lot of the times you can do it off the top of your head. What you wanna be thinking about is specific URLs that people visit when they are trying to um, alleviate any of their pain points. So for people who are in the weight loss course or people who are in the weight loss industry, I should say, you want to be using a um, websites that people go to specifically to lose weight. That might be different diet websites where they're finding out about diets. It might be um, maybe some workout plans that you find online on uh, different websites or anything like that. So as a practical example, if I don't know too much about the websites that people are visiting, what I'd do is I'd literally go to Google and I'd go how to lose weight. So literally enter in one of, the your, uh, one of the search terms that we're using that we've already found and already thought of ourselves. And then all we have to do is scroll down past the ads and click on one of the links that pops up that seems appropriate that you know that someone who visits that URL will be finding the pain point that they can't lose weight or that they're lose, uh, looking at losing weight fast. So let's say we go for, for this link over here, 20 free tips for weight loss that actually works. Now, what I suggest is you just have a quick scan of the page, make sure that it is actually talking about weight loss and that your ideal client will be visiting that URL. And then what I want you to do is take the URL exactly as it is, copy it, and then paste it into your notes. So paste it into your notes document. Now I want you to repeat that process and find three to five URLs that you can be using that you know people who visit that website will be interested in your weight loss or whatever your course is. Okay, so off camera, I've got a couple of extra URLs, some for diet plans and some for just general weight loss. Now, again, we're gonna set this aside. We don't need to worry about the audiences. We don't need to worry about how to actually create them. We're gonna be going through that in the tutorial where it's gonna be click here, click there. But you've done the research. You've done one of the most key parts of YouTube ads. So now what we can do is just dive straight into the Google Ads dashboard, set up a Google Ads account and actually run some YouTube ads. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to go to ads.google.com. If you missed it, the reason that we run our ads from Google or from the Google Ads platform is because Google owns YouTube, which means to show our ads on YouTube, we need to go to the Google Ads platform. So that's ads.google.com and press enter. 
So if you already have an existing Google Ads account, you can just click the sign in button. I'm gonna do that in just a second. But if you haven't got a Google Ads account and you need to create one, all you have to do is press the start now button and just follow through their steps on how to create a Google Ads account. It's really, really simple. You just need to follow through their steps on actually creating an account. Just put in all your details, uh, nice and easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the sign in button because we've already got an account, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so if you've created a brand new Google Ads account, the first thing that you need to do is press the tools and settings button at the top, and there should be an option to switch to expert mode. So there should be an option that you're seeing in your dashboard to switch to uh, expert mode. That will help you get a dashboard that looks something like the dashboard I'm seeing. Obviously you won't have created any campaigns, so you won't have any campaigns there, or you might have created one. Uh, just make sure that that one is paused. So the first techie thing that we need to do is we need to link up Google Ads and our YouTube account. The reason being is we need the two platforms to talk to each other to effectively work and communicate. So what I want you to do is go to youtube.com in a new window or a new tab. If you haven't signed in, you can just press the sign in button at the top and sign in with the same details you've used to create your Google Ads account. Okay, so once you've signed in, what you need to do is you need to click the avatar at the top right and you need to go to the YouTube studio. So if you haven't created a YouTube channel before, you've never been to the YouTube studio in this particular account. So in most cases, that's gonna be people who've created a new Google account and therefore a new YouTube account. There might be some um, prompts when you uh, click on the YouTube studio to go through certain steps to create a channel. So you have to give your channel a name, add some art, all of that kind of awesome stuff. Um, for this, we're gonna assume that you've already created that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to settings on the left-hand side. So you go to settings and then you go to channel. So go to channel and click on advanced settings. Now scroll down and go to the Google Ads account linking. What you wanna do is you wanna press the button that says link account, nice and simple. Enter a link name so you can just call it ad account. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. And then it's gonna ask you for a Google Ads customer ID. To get this, you need to go back to your Google Ads dashboard and your customer ID is in the top right of the screen. What I want you to do is copy that 10 digit code, go back to YouTube and paste it in the customer ID. Now you see ours has gone red, that's because this is already linked up, but for you it should turn green. The next section is the permissions that you give to Google Ads uh, and you want all of them selected. So view counts, remarketing and engagement all needs to be selected and once it is all selected, press done. Now that's done on YouTube side. What you need to do is you need to go back to Google Ads and link it the other way around so that they talk to each other on both sides. To do that, go to Google Ads and in the top of your screen, in the top bar, click on tools and settings. Now, once you click on tools and settings, what you want to do is go to your linked accounts. Click the button there. And then there should be a prompt from YouTube saying that there is an account that needs to be linked. If not, you can literally just scroll down and select YouTube and press manage and link or details. When you do that, you'll see in this top bar, we don't have one because we didn't link it, that you'll have a link request from um, your YouTube channel. So the same YouTube channel that you just um, linked on the YouTube side of it. All you need to do is accept the permissions and link the account. So follow the steps to link the two accounts. Okay, so now that we've linked up YouTube and uh, Google Ads, there's just one more bit of tech that we need to go through before we can actually create the campaigns, and it's something called conversion tracking. Now, Google, uh, when we run our ads, we want to see in Google Ads how successful our ads are going, and we wanna be seeing how many people are either uh, registering for one of our trainings or a webinar, or booking phone calls, or purchasing our products. On Google Ads, what they do is they use a conversion snippet, which is a little bit of code that fires when someone visits a key page after taking an action on your page. 
So what I want you to do is go to tools and settings and go to conversions. And you'll be taken to a screen that looks a little bit like this. Again, as with most things in this tutorial, we've obviously run our ads for ages. So we have a ton of different conversions. We have a ton of different campaigns. Yours will be looking slightly different, um, but the general concept is exactly the same. All you need to do is press the button that says new conversion action. And we're just gonna pause there. What I want you to do in this time is think, what would a key action that someone be taking actually be? So for example, we measured key actions as when someone parts with some of their information, whether that be a name and an email address when they're registering for a webinar, whether that be a name, email address, and a phone number when they're booking a call with, uh, with us to see if they wanna become a private client, or whether it be when they're giving their credit card information and actually purchasing a product of ours. So I want you to think, what is a key step that someone takes when they are going through your sales process? Is it that you go straight to book a call and they're giving you their, their, um, their name, email address and number? Well, we need to create a conversion event for that. Is it that you are running webinars or you got a free training and it's where somebody gives you their name and email address? We need to create a create conversion event for that. Let's say in our funnel, we are just trying to get people registered for a free training. So we're just trying to get their name and email address. So what you need to do is you need to click on website and it will take you to a screen that looks a little bit like this. You've got to put in a website domain. Now you can just put in your domain if you've already got a sales funnel created or a website or anything like that. If you don't, there's absolutely no problem. You can literally just type in google.com and press scan. It's not going to affect your, um, your results at all. You can also select either one of these two addresses and just press apply. Now this isn't gonna stop your ads from running, it's not gonna keep your ads from running or anything like that, so don't worry about it. After that, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go past the section that says create conversion actions automatically. And we're gonna go to a section that says create conversion actions manually using code. Now that sounds scary, but don't worry, we're literally gonna walk you through with this tutorial, so it's not gonna be anything you need to worry about. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the button that says add a conversion action manually. And we're taken to a screen that looks a little bit like this. We've got a goal and action optimization and it gives you a few different categories. Now, like I mentioned, we're gonna be uh, using a conversion event for people who give us their name and email address and they sign up for some free training. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, select submit lead form. If you are going straight for a call or anything like that, or you're set, setting this up to track your calls um, or you're tracking purchases. You can use any of these other um, options that they've given you. For calls, I would probably use something like uh, contact or book appointment. And for purchases, obviously use something like purchases. The next section is the conversion name. So I'm just gonna call it, um, let's call it, free training lead so free training lead this is just something that helps with your own naming strategy so uh, if you want a webinar registration you can have a webinar registration if not you can have booked call anything like that it really really doesn't matter it's just internal naming so i'm going to call it free training lead the next section is the value. Now, if, you, um, if you're not taking any payments specifically for that action, so someone signing up for a free training or booking a call, select don't use a value. If you are taking um, a payment, so it's a purchase, then pop in the value of the purchase. If you've got a couple of different payment options, just put in the higher, higher version, that's totally fine. For the count, we select one and then we leave everything else the same apart from the attribution model, which we switch from data driven to last click. You will, or you may get an error from Google saying that it's not the most accurate. I tend not to listen to those um, because I actually do find it to be way more accurate. Press done and then press save and continue. Okay, so there are two key components for getting this tag to fire correctly and actually record conversions. You need something called the Google tag that is effectively a bit of code that's like Google's brain. And you need something called a conversion event. We've just created the conversion event. So before we can actually put the conversion snippet 
on our page, on the relevant page, we need to grab the Google tag. So what I want you to do is click on where it says Google tag. I've got a button that says try again. You might say uh, see something that says activate or setup or anything like that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna flick the switch from use a Google tag that you already have to install a Google tag. And press next. We're gonna um, forget about the installing with a website builder. We're gonna go for installing manually and we're gonna grab the code. So you can either press this copy button up at the top or you can select the whole thing and copy it. So now we need to paste it on our actual sales funnel. I'm using a software called ClickFunnels. Uh, you might be using any of the other softwares. You might have a website on WordPress or anything like that. What you need to do is you need to just navigate to your website. Now the global site code or also the Google tag, literally the bit of code that we've just copied, needs to go on every single page inside of your sales funnel. So um, on ClickFunnels it's really nice and easy. All you have to do is press the settings cog at the top right and then in the body tracking code, you can just paste in your global site tag or your Google tag. They're one and the same thing. Sometimes the names are quite interchangeable. Then scroll down to the bottom and press save and update settings. For those of you who aren't using ClickFunnels, you're using another software, what you uh, will need to do, you just need to make sure it's pasted on all of the pages that you're using inside of your funnel, either in the body or the footer section. Now, before we move away from uh, click funnels in our page, I just wanted to show you the, the type of funnel that we've got. We've got a capture page, it's also known as a registration page or an opt-in page um, or a, uh, a lead magnet page, anything like that. We've got a bridge page, which is where our free training is hosted. We got a book a call and then someone can fill out the form to confirm their call with us and submit an application to work with us. What we do with conversion events is we need to think about um, what is the page after someone takes the action that, they, that we're tracking for that they land on. Because that way we know that anyone who lands on that page, they would have had to have taken the action to have landed on that page. So let's say um, we've got this basic funnel here We've got our capture page, our bridge page, our book a call page, and then they can fill out a form to submit an application. Now we take the name and email address on the capture page. If I launch it here, you'll be able to see. We take the name and email address here, but the page that they land on afterwards, this bridge page, is the only way that they're going onto that page is if they have seen, uh, if they have, the only way that they're landing on that page is if they've given us their name and email address. So that means the code has to fire on that page because then Google knows when someone lands on that page, oh, they must have given our name and email address. So we navigate back to Google, click on done, and then we've got this submit lead form section. We just press see event snippet, and then we copy the snippet here. You can highlight it and copy it if you want, or just press the copy button so then we navigate over to ClickFunnels, we press the edit page button, and we paste in our tracking code in the tracking code section. Now on ClickFunnels there's only a header and a footer code, so we just paste the conversion snippet in the footer code. If you've got a body code, that's totally fine to paste in the body or if you uh, would prefer the footer works just as well. The key thing is make sure that the event snippet is pasted below the global or the Google Ads tag. So the Google Ads tag that we pasted on all of the pages beforehand, make sure that the conversion snippet is below that because it needs to fire second. And then press save and you're done. Okay, so that's all the setup done. Now we can get to actually launching our first YouTube ads campaign. So I'm gonna go over to the Google Ads dashboard. I'm gonna close this down. I'm gonna press the Google Ads logo at the top left. When I press that, it takes me to the campaign section. If you're seeing something like an overview over here, or it's taking you to that screen, just click on campaigns on the left-hand side and you'll be seeing a screen that looks similar to this. Click on the plus button to create a new campaign and press the button that says new campaign and you will be taken to a window that looks 
a little bit like this. Okay, first of all, we're gonna click on website traffic. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you use sales leads or website traffic. I just found that with new accounts, it just gets the ad started a little bit easier. And then we do not need to worry about these conversion goals. We've already set, set them up. You should actually really only be seeing one or two. Um, we've obviously created tons in the past, so that's why we're seeing so many. Um, but just leave them all to be selected and press continue. We are running YouTube ads. So we only want to be showing on videos, so reach viewers on YouTube and get conversions. And there's only one goal, and that is to drive conversions. Press continue. Okay, so we're into the campaign settings. Now it's split up into three different parts. You've got the general settings, you've got the ad group settings, and you've got the ad settings. The general settings is literally everything about the campaign as a whole. So everything within the campaign, um, they follow these settings. That's stuff like locations, it's stuff like uh, the languages or anything else that your customers speak. The next section is the ad group section. That's everything to do with targeting. And then the ad section is to do with the video ads that we are running. So campaign name. What you wanna do is you wanna call your campaign uh, either custom Google audiences or custom URLs. So when we run our ads, we only use one type of targeting. So we did some research uh, earlier where we found custom Google audiences. So that was what people are searching for on Google and YouTube, literally the stuff they're typing in. And we did another one based on the websites that they are visiting. We just want to split them into two different campaigns. So select one or the other. So you can either go with your websites one and then repeat this tutorial and do the custom Google audiences or you can do vice versa and follow along with me and go for the custom Google audiences. But what you want to do is you want to put the topic in, so that's going to be weight loss, spelled completely wrong, and then CGA to be custom Google audiences, or anything that will help you remember that it's a custom Google audience campaign. The next section is your locations. Now, by default, it will either be set to all countries and territories, or um, the, the place that your ad account is in, um, what we tend to do is we use the big five. So if you have a global audience, then we target the United States, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. Those um, are the five locations that we found work really, really well. If you've got a local business or you only want to be targeting people in the United Kingdom or uh, the US and Canada, obviously just enter in the correct locations, not really rocket science. So I'm going to pop in the big uh, five that we're going to be using. Look how quick I type. The next section is languages. Nice and easy. It's just the language that you speak in your ads. If you speak French, obviously you put in French. If you speak English, put in English. Now, you're taken to a, uh, a section that talks about the bid strategy. There's two different strategies that Google recommends, either uh, maximize conversions or target CPA. Maximize conversions is good for beginner accounts. So if you're just starting out your account and you haven't got any data, I would recommend using maximize conversions with low budgets. If you have got conversion data in your account, you've run YouTube ads before, switch to target CPA, click on uh, the, uh, the window where you can put in or the section where you can put in the CPA and Google will give you a suggested one. I tend to go in the middle of the two suggestions. So I'm gonna go for 35 pounds uh, as a target CPA. Just bear in mind your budget can be lower than the target CPA. This is just a target that we're giving um, Google. So we say to Google, I want you to be getting in registrants or conversions. So that's people signing up for the free um, training that we've got uh, sorted for 35 pounds and under. Now, it's not a guarantee that Google will hit those numbers. They might find that it's not possible to get those numbers with the funnel that you've created. And you need to take an internal look and think, OK, is there something going wrong with my ads? Uh, is the messaging off or anything like that? Um, or they might absolutely smash it out of the park. And we find this a lot of the times with the ads we run, where we'd set a relatively high target CPA and still get low lead costs. The next section is your budget and dates. I don't even worry about the dates. I just run my ads and pause them when I want to pause them. Um, but your budget is important. Now, this is something to consider. 
you don't want to be spending more than what you can afford over the course of a month. So when I'm working out my budgets for our YouTube ads campaign, I think, what is my monthly budget? So how much do I want to be spending on Google ads or on YouTube ads over the month? And then I divide that by 30. Um, so let's say you're just starting out, you've got a new account, you're using maximized conversions. I would recommend a daily budget of five to $10. Uh, so I'm going to se select five. Now, <laughs> Google is absolutely insane. And it's going to say, considering, uh, consider increasing your budget to 525 pounds. Now, don't worry about that. You're going to find that there's a lot of errors that Google give you, which don't actually mean a thing. At the end of the day, they're just trying to get you to spend more on their platform. So after that, we're just going to scroll through everything else. We're not going to worry about networks or site links, even though it says that you can get up to 24% more conversions. Again, that's Google just uh, throwing out numbers um, as we saw above. We're going to go for the additional settings and then we're going to select devices and set specific targeting for your devices. We're going to remove tablets and TV screens because we found that they just don't work. And then you can close up the window if you so wish. So that's everything to do with the campaign settings. Campaign settings. You're now going to go into the ad group settings. So now this is everything to do with the targeting. Ad group name, I just tend to name it the same as the campaign. So weight loss, um, CGA. And you get to this point where it talks about the audience. Now this is where we input either our custom Google uh, searches or our Google searches, or we put in our uh, URLs. So what we want to do is we want to press the button that says add an audience. And then we're going to press the button at the top that says new audience. For the audience name, I just tend to, again, just call it the same as the campaign. Whoops. And you're going to go to this section that says custom segments. If you click on where it says add or create, there's a section that says plus new segment. So you're going to click on that and it'll take you to a new window where you can add in uh, your segment, which is effectively just the custom Google uh, audiences or the URLs. So you'll be following this if you're doing the URL method as well. So again, with the segment name, there's so many times where you need to just put in names. I'm just going to keep it the same weight loss CGA. And then I'm going to flick the switch. It might be set to uh, people with any of these interests or purchase intentions. I'm just going to flick it to people who search for any of these terms on Google. And all we need to do is add in the Google search terms. Now, very simply, go back to our um, text edit document, or if you need to write these in manually, that's totally fine as well. And literally just paste them all in or write them all in. Now on the right hand side, it's going to give you a load of insights. If loads of stuff appears and it doesn't seem part of your ideal audience or anything, again, you don't need to worry about it. These are just segment insights and they don't mean anything. Now, if you were to be using the URL method, let me just remove all of these. If you were to be using the URL method, you'd name the uh, segment as something like weight loss URL. And then instead of pasting in the people who search for any of these terms on Google, you'll go for people who browse types of websites. Nice and simple. And then all you need to do is you need to grab the websites and you need to paste them in the, uh, the box. Again, don't worry if it doesn't give you any segment insights or if it gives you segment insights and it doesn't feel that targeted, that's totally fine. Now, as I was using a uh, a custom Google audience in this campaign. I'm going to switch it back. I'm going to quickly grab the custom Google search terms, pop them in, and then press save. And nice and simply, we've created a custom Google audience. Now, just the last thing that we need to do is the demographic section. We need to make sure that we're actually targeting the right people. So let's say you have a, uh, a product which is only for males or only for females. Obviously, if your product is only for males, remove females and unknown. If your product is only for uh, females, re remove males and unknown. And same with the age groups as well. Uh, we like to go for 25 to 65 and then remove unknown. There are additional demographics where you can um, 
select uh, parental status and also household income. Just bear in mind, if you're targeting anywhere in Europe, so United Kingdom or anywhere in Europe, leave unknown switched and then just go for 50%, 10% uh, to 50% and then including unknown. Uh, there's laws around not being able to target income in the UK and Europe, which is why we need to leave unknown selected. Otherwise, your ads won't show to anyone in the UK or Europe. And then we're going to press save. So we can scroll down and you'll notice that Google has forced us to use optimized targeting or it's pre-populated optimized targeting. Switch that off. Uh, in all of our testing, we haven't found that to be any help whatsoever. Okay, so the last section is our video ad. So we need to actually upload our YouTube video onto YouTube or our YouTube ad. So what you want to do is navigate over to YouTube and then on the screen there should be a create button. Press the create button and press upload videos and upload your video. You'll be taken through a load of steps about um, some of the settings for your video. The key ones to look out for is to select a thumbnail uh, that looks good. You might need to go to a software such as Canva and design a custom thumbnail. And then second of all, make sure your video is set to unlisted and not private. So unlisted um, as your video. Once you have created your video, you've uploaded it onto YouTube, you can go to the content section on the left hand side and you'll be able to see all of your YouTube videos. Click on the video and then on the right hand side you'll see a video link. What we want to do is we want to press the button that says copy video link and then we're going to navigate back over onto Google Ads and very nice and simply paste in our video. Scroll down and you get to the final URL section. Now this is the URL that you're going to be sending your traffic to. So when they see your YouTube video, they click on the button to learn more, for example. This is the page that they're taken to. So for us, that's going to be our capture page. It's also in a lot of cases a registration page, a lead magnet page, an opt-in page. If you're going for a direct call, could be a call where uh, a page where someone can um, book a spot on your calendar, anything like that, where you want your YouTube ads traffic to go to, that's the final URL. Select it and paste it in the final URL section, just making sure it's pasted in correctly. For the call to action, I like to select learn more, it's not too pushy. And then the headline, um, it doesn't, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It can literally be something like free training if you're offering a free training or a free webinar, free class. Or if you're booking a call, it could be book a call, something like that. Uh, or strategy session, something like that. As long as it fits in the characters, it's totally fine. The long headline, I tend to use um, just some compelling text to get someone to opt in. So um, learn more about YouTube ads using an unknown traffic strategy. So I'll select something like learn more about YouTube, YouTube ads using an unknown traffic strategy and the description I just tend to put click here to find out more. So if you have multiple video ads that you want to be uploading and testing, which we actually do recommend, you can press the new video ad button here. It's under ad creation so just click on that and press the new video ad button uh, or you can make a duplicate and just swap out the links that's totally cool as well um, but then after you're done or if this is your first and only video ad you can press the button to create your campaign well done you've got through creating a youtube ads campaign it might take a couple of days to actually get some data in but well done for getting to this stage because the power of youtube is insane literally nuts you can just send such targeted traffic you would have seen it when we created the custom google audiences and the uh, the targeting that we've been doing it is absolutely insane the level that you can take your youtube ads to and the, the, what it can potentially do for your business so you're going to be getting your data in soon and sometimes it can be pretty overwhelming um, but don't worry about that, we got you covered. John has recorded a video um, about how to read your data, how to navigate the YouTube ads dashboard so that you can optimize what is working 
and take your ads to a whole nother level. We'll leave it up on the screen uh, so you can click on that and watch that video. But with that, that's me out, I'm done here. So thank you very much for joining me on this YouTube ads tutorial and hopefully I'll see you online soon.